I just started deep diving on synthesizers and Liam as the sort of primary songwriter had started getting very much into his like eighties new wave sort of stuff. Um, you know, like your joy division and the cure and stuff like that. And we realized that gigs were going to be coming back, but gigs weren't going to be coming back in completely full swing. People weren't going to be able to mush. People weren't going to be able to dance around. And it was most likely going to be a seated sort of thing. And so we figured that we'd just, kind of re rewrite our music to fit the vibe a bit and to you know maybe not sort of put on this show where people are feeling a bit crappy about sitting down and wishing they could stand but have something that actually is tailored to your audience to make sure that they have sort of the best possible time under the circumstances that they ha are under it's cool too because like it's not like each track on it was 80s bop pop heavy like each one just kind of is its own different version of the original song which is what i really like like you kind of just were like what can we do that's the complete opposite of of this one this time um so i, I want to show people what we're talking about now in in the set do you do like uh like this version and then halfway through like hit some kind of alarm and then just <laughs> auto switch to the other other track or how do you decide which which version to play in the set list um, it usually, again, it kind of depends on the audience. That's a pretty good idea though. I might, I might steal that off you. Thanks. Yeah. But, you're welcome. <laughs> um, I think, yeah, it kind of depends on the audience, but, uh, for the most part, I think we've been playing mostly the remix stuff since it came out, but now we're kind of going to be mixing it up. And we did have this idea where we'd sort of take the arrangements of the remix versions, but then play them as a rock band kind of without the synth and do that stuff on guitars and make it a bit heavier or vice versa, take the heavier versions and take those arrangements as they are and like synth them up a little bit, which is a, an idea that we got from when Say Anything did an album called Hebrews where they didn't have any guitars. It was just drums, bass, and then things like orchestral instruments. But when they toured that live, they just did it as a rock band. Oh, cool. That is different. I like that. Uh, I want to play Fallen, and then I want to save one of my absolute favorites for the for the last one. So crazy to me. It's so like uh, it's so out of the realm of what I thought was possible. That like you know you're a guy that's like literally on the other side of the world that's just vibing it. <laughs> I just think it's cool that you guys think it's cool that I'm jamming your music. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, real quick, let's spark that thing. Smoke weed every day. Do you guys use the same uh, video director all the time, or do you do you like to like switch it up as far as who's going to be uh, the particular director for the video? Uh, we've we've definitely switched it up between videos. Um, the even like the last video, the one that we're sorry, the new video that we're about to put out was uh, a different team that we worked with all together, but they were actually uh, pretty close mates. It was um indy from wind waker and jackson from the band rumors and so they helped direct the video but um the one sort of consistent thing from each video is like there's a, le uh, a heavy level of involvement from the band especially ariel our guitarist he's very very switched on with that stuff and just at, like knows his shit through and through so he's always got a really really well developed idea we'll all pitch in here and there and then he'll usually like take it to someone or a team of people and then they'll all kind of bring it to life so you guys are all still close with wind waker even though liam walked away from from them <laughs> yeah yeah 100 percent. because sometimes that's um, you know sometimes like, there's like you know sometimes people are bitter and it's not as easy to still be friends with your the band you used to be in and stuff like that you know so a hundred percent but uh they're they're, no, they're on great terms i think in the end like they'd all kind of decided that uh it was what was best and like liam's still you know closer than closer with them than any of us and they're they're such chill guys like i really couldn't see them actually getting sort of shitty about that especially considering the success that they're having with adam <laughs> it's true so this is my absolute favorite record uh from you guys which is brevity slash solace and uh, we joked about it last time, how it has like the most vocal stutters like I've ever heard on on a track. Yeah. It has like a hundred vocal stutters at one part, at one part, like all at the same time at the end. But it's done like so awesome. 
Um, so this is my favorite from you guys. The Shadow Remix. Right. Revy Slash. These, these two songs have always been like two of my favorites to play live. Oh, sorry, man. I was just going to say, it's funny that you say that uh, the songs are like the opposite of what they are on the other record, because like, that's definitely true. But I also feel like there's, uh, there's an element of like unity to each song, like Solace on both, uh, both records is definitely one of the grooviest songs going. It has such a cool groove when it like kicks in halfway through this song, like that, that bass riff is just makes you kind of just want to do like one of these right here. <laughs> I gotta play, I gotta play the stutter. Hell yeah. Give me a hell yeah. <laughs> well done. Well done. Well done. Good stuff. Thank you so much. It's we'll we'll end with clockwork and then we'll uh if you're down we'll review some bands together and do a little trivia. Can you explain what what went into the writing behind this particular song clockwork? Yeah, 100%. Um, we held like a little, just a little sort of online competition, fan competition. And one of the things was, um, one of the prizes was, yeah, you know, we'll write a cover of a song of your choice. And I think Clock so you got North Lane. Lane had just come out. Yeah. Okay. hundred percent. And so, uh, they were like Clockwork by North Lane. And at first there was a part of me that was kind of like, uh, we're writing, we're going to cover a song by an Australian band and it's a recently released song. Like you're going to be able to, that song's going to be everywhere without us. It's not like we're dusting off and a hidden gem but it was what they wanted and so we went into it and uh yeah it's just for me this song feels like a lot sort of closer to maybe the light that you saw rather than something like relight even though it is uh still like heavy on the synth um and yeah while clockwork by north lane kind of feels more like a more like an edm track that they've kind of half transformed into a metal track but it still mostly feels like an edm track this one feels like closer to a punk track that's trying to emulate an edm track so i think it kind of offers something a bit different let's check it out resides cover of north lane's clockwork well because you guys made it your own like you made it very much your own style like it's way different than just like singing the notes playing the same parts adding like the the edm layers that you that you mentioned like it's it's different it doesn't have like the screams in certain parts it's it's uh has like its own little melody spots and stuff it's cool i dig it yeah 100 uh that was that was all liam and just uh yeah it's a great way to just i don't know add the flavor keep it interesting there's probably no point in doing a cover if you're not gonna offer something else you know offer something true. that the other song doesn't provide you know ding i need a ding button because that's a that's a fact right there ding uh, okay, let's let's see what we got to jam from uh, some submissions from you guys. And we don't know what these uh, what these sound like. Could be any genre from anywhere. I'd be dancing if I saw that one. Yeah, that was pretty dope. That was a, that uh, just that just felt good. Oh yeah, somebody says we have to scoot up one real quick. Uh, venues. I don't know if I passed it. Lizzie, I don't see it. I don't see it. What's the name of the song? We'll find it. What is the name of the song? How's the weather over there right now for you guys? It's actually really, really awesome right now. It's like not too hot. It's the all of January was just fucking torture, man. It was like it was hellish out here. But now it's like cooled down a bit, but it's still sunny out. So no complaints from me, honestly. It's like a great day to just sit outside and blaze. Hell yeah. Can't complain with that. That's what you do. Venues the epilogue. <laughs> we found it. Uh, this this spin is for Full Frontal for his donation. He said, "Pick a character." So when you came in, there was like tattoos all over my face. Someone had picked a character, and they were like face tattoos. So now they can turn me into something. So we finished the interview, oddly <laughs> in a weird, strange way. Thanatos with hello, dude. What'd you think of that one? That one. <laughs> I liked, I definitely liked parts of it. I, there's something about the, like, just that shreddy guitar. I think maybe I just overdid it for myself when I was like 16, 17, listening to that kind of music. But now I just, it just makes me laugh now. So like, as soon as something does that, I'm kind of like, oh, okay. <laughs> I think that one's pretty cool. The has... intro, the intro was fat as fuck. Have you ever seen the show Sopranos? Dude, it's actually funny that you mentioned that. 
I uh, at the house that I'm living at at the moment, every Sunday, one of us cooks, and then after dinner, we all sit down and watch an episode or two episodes of The Sopranos. So I'm like one Excellent. episode into season three at the moment. Okay, then I think this one probably times out with uh, about right. What was AJ doing? AJ Soprano doing in the garage on the day of his confirmation. I'm not sure if I have seen that, but I'm going to say he was getting high. Smoke weed every day. Oh. That is correct. I'm going to give you a spin, sir. And then I owe some people in chat a spin as we queue up uh, one more Reside song. What would you like? Preferably maybe one that has a music video. I feel like that's a little better. But uh, any song that of your choice. Of my choice? Of your choice. Hmm. I reckon... You know what? Go. I'd go for We're Not Monsters Yet. That was our first ever music video. The live music video right here? Or no, the official one right here. Yeah, yeah. The, the official, official one. Video. <coughs> Were you in... deep cut old one. Were you, uh, were, do you guys still play this one live? Um, well, we've actually got a show coming up where we're gonna, it was just a small 70 cap room and we were like, fuck it, let's just, let's just get the old shit out and just like cram that room and make it like a fun, it's a floor show as well. So we were like, that's the perfect vibe to play the old shit. So we're uh, going to be cycling through stuff that we haven't played for a couple of years now, including this one. Hell yeah. And my, I was going to ask right before that, um, what projects were you in prior to joining Reside? Like, what what other bands, or was this your first band? No, nah, no, I was um, I I started out in a uh, in a metalcore band that will probably remain nameless just to uh, save the members some embarrassment. But um, I started out drumming for a metalcore band with uh, Nick Shogren, who's in Thornhill, and Matt Payne, who's in Vatic, and um. Yeah, that kind of just fizzled as things do sometimes. Matt and I joined Vatic, and then Liam came to me. And at the time, he was doing his rap thing, and he was like, oh, man, I kind of want to start this project, you know, playing some emo stuff just for a bit of fun. You know, let's not take it too seriously. And I was like, yeah, dude, we'll play some house parties. That'll be fun. And uh, then it just snowballed on us, and we ended up a real band. So, And now it's your most serious project right now. Current. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now it's now it's like a now it's like a lot of my creative focus. Hell yeah. We're not monsters. Yet. I don't want to play from the old stuff. Definitely. Because of all the changes it has and like the pick me ups and stuff. Hundred percent. It's 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 just like the group uh, the tempo that it's at right now and that groove just sits in a really nice bouncy place. The warm up to it's always fun. Um. The verses are actually hard. I kind of fucked myself there. I just used to, you know, be like, yeah, yeah, I'll play this. This will be fun. I never thought about how that's going to go for the longevity of a set. So, <laughs> but it's still heaps of fun. Hell yeah. Fun's all, uh, it's all that matters. Such a fun energy. You guys have such a, just an awesome, fun energy, man. I got to somehow get to Australia or even easier. You just figure out a way to come over to California and, and play a show over here and I'll be there. <laughs> I have never, never traveled overseas before. And it's kind of like, uh, you know, if I'm ever going to do it, I really want, just want music to take me there. Like that's kind of my ticket out. So I dig that. I'm hoping so. Where of all places, not including, let's say not, you can't say the States where, where would you like to go? Like, as far as like a bucket list, this is the one place overall I'd want to play. Uh, that I'd want to play. Cool. Yeah, that you'd want to play, not visit. What place that you'd want to play a set? Mm, that's a really good question. I think the obvious answer is Brazil. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> wow. But they, uh, one place genuinely that like, I don't know, I think the UK would be fun. Like, uh, like even just somewhere like Germany, I think. That'd be pretty dope. I feel like that'd go off. A lot of bands say that... Uh, when people come to Japan, like bands outside of Japan visit there, like the fans are just extra wild and crazy for some reason. So that would be like a spot for me if I was ever to play uh, something or back in the day, I suppose. Um, Japan what's... produced some pretty fucking hectic metal music as well. They do. They're doing well over there in that department. I like it. Um, you guys, to my knowledge, I don't think you have 
very many, if not any, features on any of your tracks. Is there is there an artist or two that you've ever had in mind that you'd like to work with that you just haven't had a chance to work with yet? Um, well, I think that on the new record, there's going to be uh, actually on the next single, we've got a feature, um, and I'll probably leave that nameless until the actual song comes out. So you know, bit of hype, but um, I just think up until now, it's we haven't really found that many bands that uh, we'd match with well enough or uh, even the opposite thing, maybe we match with how uh, we sound too similar. So there's no, you need to find that nice medium between, you know, share a same sort of sound, but they're also like contrast to complement each other's work. One band that uh, Saleh and I have always talked about, it'd be fucking awesome to do a split EP with is uh, Parkwood. I'm not sure if you've heard of those guys. Parkwood? No, let's check them out. What song? Uh, Chuck on I'll Be Fine. This is really emo shit, but it's really, really good. Check it out. Yeah, I'm definitely jamming jamming this another day. Parkwood. 100%. They've got some new music coming out soon, hopefully, as well. And I am just so stoked for that. <laughs> yeah, that's, that one's, yeah. I wrote that down so I can jam it later for sure. Parkwood. It, <laughs> it reminds me of, of the first Movements album. Like the very first one. Really? Oh, I can hear that, yeah. A little bit, because like, it was kind of like that like poetry style before it goes into the screaming, like the way he's kind of like going about his words and stuff. 100%. I, um, uh, a lot of their other stuff is like a lot more upbeat and hardcore, but there's still a lot of like spoken word, and it's like really eloquent and really beautiful stuff. Hell yeah. Dude, what do you got, uh, what do you got going on the rest of the day? Um, well, I, t I took work off to do this. I totally, to be completely honest with you, I spaced it until yesterday and Liam was like, hey, so that interview's tomorrow at 11.45. And I thought that when we'd message, but I was like, yeah, anytime after 3 p.m., I forgot that I should have said, oh, maybe like Australian time. <laughs> but, uh, so, whoops. yeah, and, <laughs> but no, that's like, I just, I, I swung a favor with my boss, got the day off work. And so now I'm just going to fucking enjoy myself. I'm going to hang out with Liam for a bit, I think, uh, maybe have a beer. Just chill. What about cool. yourself? I'm, I will, we'll be here jamming some more uh, reviews for a little while of, of stuff that we need to hear. And that's why I'm going to ask Chad, actually, what did we miss? Lizzie or Mac, what did we miss? Because uh, I have the notification sounds muted while I was talking to you. I know we missed a couple things that people wanted us to hear as far as like hitting the sub button and whatnot. Uh, while she gets that answer to me, let's go ahead and play Marcotic F a record deal. I say yay. What do you think of that one, dude? That beat sounded like it was super uh, Halloween inspired, like like the original score to Halloween, that sort of piano sting. Yeah, the little ride, like the, yeah, for sure. Good call. Good call. We're being told we need to play this one next right here, which is Danish. Hey, that's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, that was a pretty nice beat. Made me feel. Got that that violin too. That violin sample was 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 pretty sweet right there. Yeah, yeah, I like that. One more that we have to play is "Said It." Said it. Nothing left of me. Hell yeah. That that I, that was really groovy, and I feel like I would have screamed those lyrics when I was like twelve, thirteen. Like those those are really uh they're kind of reminiscent of bands uh like. Evanescence or even like Lincoln Park Meteora lyrics. Wow, hell yeah. Wow, that's a that's a compliment I would wow. say. Hell yeah. <laughs> well, dude, um what do what do you guys got going on the rest of 2022? I know you said you have the song with the feature. That's what we've we've pulled out of you that much so far, but what do you have the rest of the year? What can we expect? Let's assume let's assume lockdown ends and none of that's going on. Uh is there some tour stuff in the works that you can tell us anything about? Is there a tentative release date for when the rest of the new music is going to come out? Anything? Uh, look, a lot of it, just because of all of the factors, is kind of up in the air. In, like, a perfect world where tomorrow just, like, COVID disappears and we are just back to normal. Um, I think that the single is going to be very, very soon and we it would be great to, like, get a full Australian tour in for the year. Like not just kind of like up the East coast of Australia and South Australia, but like actually visit kind of see, you know, it, just small cap rooms, but see if we can just go traveling a little bit and like get the show out to people. Definitely. 
and then also California at the, at the end of it. You just fly over here and do one <laughs> one set real quick over here in LA or somewhere. Hell yeah. Well, dude, this has been a pleasure. I uh, I appreciate you hanging out with me and, and taking some time off, but now you're going to make the best of it. Go hang with Liam. Tell him uh, we said what's up, and we're excited about the new track. Let us know when it's ready so we can jam it right away. And um, I hope everything works out the best for you guys in 2022. I've been a supporter and a fan for a long time. You know that, so I'm excited to hear the new song, man. But uh, all the best, dude. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much for having me on, man. This is awesome. Hell yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, resign! Cheers, brother. Enjoy the rest of your day.